In the dense, mysterious jungles of the rainforest from Mexico to Brazil, a legendary creature has captured the imaginations of indigenous tribes and curious explorers alike. They call it the Sisimite. If that name doesn't ring a bell, maybe this one does. Bigfoot Stories of a Bigfoot, Sasquatch, or Yeti creature aren't limited to North America or Asia. These elusive, enigmatic beings are believed to inhabit the heart of the Mexican, Central American, and South American wilderness, and their stories have been passed down through generations for thousands of years. My name is Andrew Colon, and I'd like to welcome you to the Mysteries of Latin America podcast, where we explore the myths, legends, and mysteries of North, Central, and South America and the Caribbean. We investigate stories of legendary creatures, mythological beings, extraterrestrial abductions and attacks, and surreal stories that could only happen here in Latin America. In this episode, we'll take you into the myths and mysteries surrounding the elusive human ape-like creatures known as the Sisimite. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're hearing it. And if you're so inclined, share it with the people you know who might like a look into the strange world of the mysteries of Latin America. The Sisimite, also called the Otacayo, Mapinguari, or a few other names, depending on what part of Latin America you're talking about, has been rumored to inhabit parts of Mexico, comprising the states of Campeche, Chiapas, and our state here in Quintana Roo, as well as regions with vast areas of thick tropical vegetation in countries like El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Belize, and even Colombia and Brazil. This creature has also been called the Olmec ape. While most people might know about indigenous groups like the Aztecs or the Mayans, the Olmec culture goes way back in history. In fact, it was one of the earliest complex societies in all of Mesoamerica, emerging around 1400 BC in what is modern-day Mexico. The Olmecs were well known for their monumental stone heads, and they left a long-lasting and influential legacy that we'll be exploring in a future podcast. It was the Olmecs who left a carving of an unusual ape figure to be found thousands of years later in an archaeological site in the state of Campeche, right here in the Yucatan Peninsula. So what exactly are these creatures? What do they look like? And where do they come from? The Sisimite is often portrayed as a large ape-like being with a distinctly human-like face. It's said to stand as tall as 10 to 12 feet, so 3 to almost 4 meters with long muscular arms and a fearsome appearance. It possesses tremendous strength capable of breaking bones with a single blow. Its large, hairy body helps camouflage it and blend into the dense forests. Their first color varies from chestnut brown to pitch black without protruding ears and they have flat noses. It boasts four fingers but lacks an opposable thumb and in some accounts it's said to have an unusual backward facing big toe on each foot leading to folk tales saying that the Sisimite has a totally backward-facing foot, which leaves footprints that fools trackers into going in the opposite direction. Unlike many animals, Sisimites are said to walk upright, similar to humans. They can emit high-pitched howls or screams and may possess a discernible language. Generally perceived as not hostile to humans, they have been accused of kidnapping people, especially people of the opposite sex. I'll have a story for you about that shortly. As to where they come from, there are different theories. Cryptozoologists, experts who investigate unknown or mythical animals, speculate that the Sisimite, along with its northern relative Bigfoot, might have migrated across the Bering Land Bridge, just like humans did nearly 40,000 years ago. Some people believe that the creature is a surviving remnant of Gigantopithecus, a large prehistoric ape native to Asia. It stood almost nine feet tall and supposedly died out over a hundred thousand years ago. The term Sisimite comes from the Nahuatl language used by the Aztec people and loosely translates to demon or supernatural creature. Although the Maya civilization has been familiar with the Sisimite for generations, the first documented encounter from outside sources occurred in the 18th century when a team of Spanish gold prospectors ventured into what is present-day Honduras. During their expedition, a member of this group allegedly shot and fatally wounded one of these creatures, which had been raiding their mining camp. Unfortunately, no bones or any other evidence from this encounter have made it to present-day for verification. 
The Sisimite first gained attention in the English-speaking world thanks to a man named Edward Jonathan Hoyt, who was known back in the day as Buckskin Joe. Hoyt was born in Canada, in modern-day Quebec, in 1840, and then he embarked on a unique journey. In 1861, Hoyt headed south to fight in the American Civil War, where he fought on the Union side. After the war, he went on a gold prospecting expedition in Mexico, where he reportedly had a bizarre encounter with a Sisimite, which he referred to as a horrifying hominid. Evidently, the creature ventured into his camp and into his tent while he was asleep, leading to a sensational account that made headlines back home. Startled, he reached for his weapon and found himself face to face with a creature that seemed straight out of a nightmare. The Sisimite, as the legends had described, stood before him, towering with long, powerful arms and a shaggy, fur-covered body. Instinctively, Buckskin Joe reacted, firing a shot at the Sisimite. The bullet struck the creature, and it let out a terrifying howl before retreating into the jungle. Buckskin Joe's account of the encounter made its way back to the English-speaking world, creating a sensation. The Sisimite appeared again in a 1961 compendium compiled by author Ivan T. Sanderson titled Abominable Snowmen, Legend Come to Life. In the book, the author compiled stories of the Central American Bigfoot, mostly concentrating on British Honduras, which we now know as Belize. The book introduced the Sisimite and its relatives to a 20th century audience, sparking a renewed interest in finding out if this mythical being really did exist. According to the 20th century Honduran explorer and historian Jesus Aguilar Paz, the Sisimite, or Itacayo, as it's known there, inhabits the highest part of the Honduran mountains, specifically in the inaccessible caves found there. Dr. Aguilar also explains that the Sisimite feeds on the wild berries that the mountains provide and is not a carnivorous or hunting creature. Despite its imposing appearance, the Sisimite is not typically depicted as an aggressive or malevolent being. In indigenous Mayan folklore, the Sisimite is thought to be a guardian of the forest, a protector of the animals and environment. Some tales even suggest that it has the ability to communicate with animals and possesses a deep knowledge of the rainforest's secrets. However, local legends in Honduras also say that occasionally during mating season, the Sisimite have come down from the mountains there and may even have abducted female humans. One story in particular says this happened where a Sisimite came down and took a woman back to his cave. People from the same village as the woman assumed she was dead, until months after her disappearance when she was found wandering near the village. She then recounted the most well-known story about this creature. According to her, she gave birth to three ape-like children, the result of being violated by the Sisimite, until one day she managed to escape from the cave. Being pursued, she ran until she reached a river which she crossed by swimming. However, the Sisimite remained on the other side of the river and lifted the children they'd procreated, hoping to change her mind to get her to come back. Nevertheless, the woman ran far away and could barely watch as the Sisimite, in anger, threw her children into the river where they all drowned. Catholic Archbishop and Italian archaeologist Federico Lunardi, an important scholar of Honduran culture, reported that inhabitants of the area where the Sisimite is believed to dwell claimed to have found enormous handprints on the ceilings of caves in the rainforests of Honduras evidence that the Sisimite had been there. But what about sightings or reportings closer to our time? An eyewitness known only by the name of Lily told this story on the Sasquatch Chronicles podcast about an encounter she had in 1985. She said she and her family went camping in southeastern Mexico, and when her parents were setting up camp, they started hearing what they thought were monkeys. But then she said her father said he could see the trees moving and that it was something bigger than a monkey, something with weight. They started seeing these large shapes moving around their camp as it got darker, and that these shapes started throwing things at them. So the family threw the kids into the bed of their truck, and they got out of there as soon as they could. But it wasn't over. The creatures started chasing after their truck. 
Lily thought it might be a bear. It was tough to see in the darkening light. But as she thought they were pulling away, she saw a large, leathery, black, hairy hand holding onto the tailgate of the truck, and she got to look right into the creature's big brown eyes. She said the creature's expression didn't scare her. It seemed more curious than aggressive. Either way, her father shot at the creature through the rear window of the truck's cab and sent it tumbling off the truck. And that's when Lily noticed the other one running alongside of the truck, noticeably thinner and more of a reddish brown color. It gave up chasing when it noticed its companion had fallen off the truck and the family drove out of there as fast as they could. Even more recent still is a report from the very active volcano of central Mexico, Popocatépetl, which stands at 17,802 feet high and is the second highest peak in the country. The volcano already has plenty of weirdness surrounding it, as UFOs have long been sighted there, sometimes even entering or leaving the volcano's mouth. And now the area can add sightings of a Sisimite, Bigfoot, or at least something very similar. In 2015, a mountain climber named Guillermo Vidales claimed that his mountain rescue team had sighted thin, brown, bipedal creatures measuring over 8 feet in height, so over 2.5 meters, climbing about on the side of the volcano at altitudes of up to 13,000 feet. The creatures reportedly left behind large footprints that featured odd holes penetrating into the ground from the heel, suggesting claws of some sort. This would certainly explain the purported climbing prowess they supposedly display, with Vidale saying, Once, we saw one of these individuals climb up the glacier in 10 minutes, a stretch that would take us three to four hours to go up. They have amazing agility. They even took photographs of the creatures, but as in the case of most Bigfoot sightings, they're predictably very unclear and indistinct. Even though in Mexico and the rest of Latin America, there are far fewer reports of Sasquatch-like creatures than in the US and Canada, there are thousands of years of folklore and mythology about them, and they're every bit as bizarre as anywhere else. But there are probably more questions than answers at this point. Like why is there no photographic or video evidence of these creatures? In Brazil, there have been reports of very old bones found of the Mapinguari, one of Sisimite's cousins, but not much else. Are they a separate species related to North America's Bigfoot or Asia's Yeti, or merely a different population of the same species? Or are they even real at all? Or are they the products of hoaxes, misidentification, or products of people with overactive imaginations? Whatever the case might be, the tales of this Latin American Sisimite certainly add to the mystery. As we explore the mysteries of the natural world, it's essential to remember that legends and myths often contain elements of truth, and they're a testament to the profound connection between humanity and our world. Whether or not these creatures exist in reality, their significance in indigenous cultures, and the ongoing efforts to preserve the rainforests of Latin America make the Sisimite and its relatives by other names worthy of our attention and, if it's real, our respect. I want to thank you once again for listening to the Mysteries of Latin America podcast. And if you want to not miss an episode, consider subscribing. You can catch us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Apple and iTunes, and a host of other podcast services, so everyone can hear about some of the strange, weird, and surreal stories of life in Latin America. I'm Andrew Colon. Adios. <laughs>